everyone and welcome to the Lunar today I am doing my review of All About Reading Level 4 we are almost done with it um, we are on lesson uh, 58 and we'll finish it before we start our third grade year I just wanted to show you before I start the review how we use it um, and um, let's get started okay so what I use is my teacher's guide and then I have four folders so Monday through Thursday I also have two pencil pouches and I'll show you what I use those for in a second that's the reader her second reader that's my uh, word box and then I have the activity guide all uh, in these little plastic folders um, I cut everything out at the start of the year you absolutely don't have to do that you can do it as you go along your child can do it if you would prefer it um, however way, way you want you like to do it um, but I always have always we've done level one through four and I've always prepared it in advance so generally speaking as a rule throughout our level one to level four um, curriculum I've always done it around about the same we've always done two lessons a week occasionally it's been three if it was a really short lesson but on the whole if you were to round it out I'd say it was two lessons a week and we split it over the four days so we do reading every single day but we just split the requirements over the four days hence the four folders because I'm splitting it over the four days Thursday is always the day we read our story um, and then on a Monday and a Wednesday we always have our word cards so that's why I've got the two pouches yellow was always Monday um, you know the start of the week nice and yellow <laughs> Wednesday was always blue um, not for any other reason other than that was the folder I had uh, pencil pouch I had so in there I would have um, a selection of phonics cards that I would split between the two um, and then I would have any of the green reader cards so I would do 10 per session of cards that we'd previously done um, and we were just reviewing for fluency and then in a separate little elastic band there would be any new cards that were required for that lesson that she would do during that lesson time okay so I'll just go over a lesson with you so this is lesson 58 and it's French influences so basically this is your teacher's guide and you would read this prior to the lesson to film film familiarize I nearly said something else then familiarize yourself with um, the curriculum I don't think there's an L before a in familiarize so I, I would always read this first okay then I would look here the before you begin then this is where it mentions about reviewing so um, any phonogram cards and word cards as a, and they also have a selection of games that you could use to review during uh, level one I actually made my own games to review um, so what I would do is so the review games are not so much for the green uh, word cards but more for this type of sheet um, so what I would do is in uh, level one mostly that was when she was when she was four, you know, coming on to five, I used review games. After that, we didn't really need to, um, because obviously she was older and everything else. But when they're at that early age, they need to, things need to be a lot more presented in a lot more um, fun manner. Not that this isn't fun, but you know what I mean. Um, we also do these at bedtime, which I'll I'll get to um, once we get to that part of the video. But the review games are things like this. So um, we've got our hot chicken here. Um, I'd lay the eggs out. And every time she read a word off there, we'd change the egg into a chick. Um, then there's a Peter Rabbit one here. So the, I'd lay out the cards under Peter of him in Miss McGregor's garden. And then every time she read a word out, she'd switch it for the, for a carrot. Um, this is a seed one. So she, I'd lay out the little, um, the little shoot. And then she would change it to a flower when she'd read the word. Um, this is a Halloween one. So we've got some Halloween cards in there. There's a Robin one. So we'd lay out the nest with the egg on and then um, hatch it into a robin when she's finished. There's a Christmas one. Um, these were all her favourites at that time. So they'd all be the presents under the tree and then every time she read the review card we'd switch it to one of these. And it just, in, in that level one stage, it just made it much more fun, interactive um, and she loved it. Paddington one with his suitcase and his marmalade. A Pluto one with his doghouse and his bones. Gingerbread one decorating it. Um, that was an Easter one with the Easter baskets and the eggs. There's a caterpillar one with, um, it's got the, it's got the cocoon and butterfly, the fish one, there's a Lilo and Stitch one, as I said there are tons, a winter one. Like any of the review games, because I've made a ton, this is just a few of them, I've made a ton of them. Um, if you'd like any of them let me know and I'll be happy to put them on Teachers Pay Teachers. Okay, so the lesson always starts, as I said, we review any phonograms that I want to review with her, then we review 10 word cards. These are ones that she's previously read, um, but uh, I just like to keep them in my box 
um, and we just shuffle through them. Then we'll review any phonograms. So for example, in this lesson, we're reviewing the three sounds of ch, and then we're building some words. I always use, um, in level one initially, I used to use the little tiles that come with it. And I do recommend those tiles because if you'll notice, they have the phonograms on and they're really important um, that they're together for when you're sounding out words. Um, so that's why I really prefer, um, although we did have other magnetic letters and everything else, I preferred to use those, but obviously that's entirely up to you. You don't have to do that. And I, I know a few complaints are that they're, they're smaller and everything else um, and easy to drop, or if you've got young children for them to take them off the magnetic board and wander off with them, things like that. So they introduced an app, which I absolutely love. And once the app came out, we did actually switch to that because I found it much more accessible um, and we could take it with us. So if we say, for example, we were on a wanting to do uh, schooling in the garden or something, because I like to do flexible seating. So although she does have a desk and we have a school room and everything else, if it's a nice day, why can't we go and do our reading in the garden? Um, so I like the app because it's easily portable. Um, so it's not internet based. So once you've downloaded it, you don't have to have access to the internet. And it, it covers all levels of all about reading. It also covers all levels of all about spelling. All the word, ti word tiles are on there and you can build it. I will say though, um, I prefer the app more so now than when we first got it because we have a bigger tablet. So when we first started all about reading, she had a seven inch tablet and it worked absolutely fine, but I prefer, she has a 10 inch tablet and we got the 10 inch tablet, I think two years ago. Um, and I much prefer you know, on, a, on a 10 inch tablet. So if you've got a seven inch tablet and you don't prefer it or you don't find it as, as good, that might be why, because once we upgraded the size of the tablet, it was much better. But it still works absolutely fine. I just think it's easier. You have more space and everything else to build your words. But it's totally manageable on a 7-inch. Don't go out and buy a new tablet <laughs> unless you really want one. But um, I did note that once we had upgraded to the 10-inch, it was I preferred it more. So you just practice out your sounding out um, of different words. And then in this lesson, there is a game. So it's a visit to France. So uh, what I'll do then is take it out of my folder. Okay, and then this review game, well, uh, you have the Eiffel Tower and there are some words in each one and you have some city pieces as well. So uh, we've got the Arc de Triomphe here, some words to practice. Um, we've got a chef, uh, these little vehicles and they've all got words on and it just makes it so fun because it's different, um, it's interactive and then they can obviously play around with them once they're done. Um, so we're just practicing our French words. Okay, and then you can have a little game with it as well. So what's the mime doing and the lady who's shopping. <laughs> so it's just a really fun way to review the new words. Okay, and then we've got, again, another section for new teaching for you to teach. Then they've got a leap word. They call, um, I guess, what some people might call sight words, uh, but they ha teach leap words because they say that m often most sight words can actually be phonetically spelled out. So they have uh, leap words instead. Um, so for this one, the leap word is restaurant. Then you would have your new words, and again, I would put them into the pouch. And then in this one, you have a practice fluency sheet. Um, and again, they give you little tips to try out, for example, to engage your students in a fluency exercise, and there's an activity which is fun with emotions. And all of the uh, are in all of those uh, suggestions are all in the appendix at the back. Then it asks you to read a story or your poem for 20 minutes, and then you always get this chart where you actually they as part of the pack you get stickers to put onto your chart once you finish your lesson. So this is the review sheet for lesson 58. Now we always do them at night time. So um, we'll get jammies on, teeth brushed, have our stack of books ready for reading. And before we do that, if we have a fluency sheet to do, we will, we will do that then. Um, so we will do that before we start our reading. Um, for the evening, I just found that doing that in the lesson with all the other stuff as well um, was too much. And it was better to do it a bit later on in the day. Or, you know, for example, if you wanted to do it in your, if you do an evening basket or an afternoon basket, um, to split it that way. But you, you know, you might not find you need to do that. You might find it's fine to do all in one lesson. But I just thought it was much better to do that, especially in the lower levels, um, rather than saying, okay, now we're going to do this, this and this, you know, all at one time. I found it was much better to space it out a little bit. But again, whatever works for you. We could do this in the lesson now. I mean, now she's in level four, but because that's our routine from level one, we still carry on with it. So she will do this in the evening um, before we do our bedtime basket. And then there's always more words on the back. Um, you, you can do the more words if you have got... Uh, 
an older student perhaps so you're wanting to challenge or you can just do the more words for additional practice or you can skip the more words that's in the curriculum you'll read it as you uh, go along so you don't have to do the more words it is optional um, but if you have an older student and they say to encourage them to do to do so should they desire to so you always have a little message um, um, on lessons periodically from whatever the theme is. So for this one, it is him. <laughs> He's giving us this little message and giving us some information about the Wright brothers, which is always good. Okay, then it's the story day. So this is lesson 59. So this would be on to uh, Wednesday now. So the Monday and Tuesday will have done those. Then Wednesday, we are on to the the reading story um, but we do the work first so we don't actually read the story till the Thursday so for the Wednesday we would do our phonogram review we would review our word cards then there's an activity so this one is complete activity sheet let's learn to talk like a parrot so you've got the parrot dictionary okay so here's our little parrot dictionary and then it's got <laughs> what kinds of words in here uh, to talk like a parrot and their meaning so we've got Scallywag, a person who likes to get into mischief. Uh, it's some non-fiction in there, so tell me what scurvy is. So a common disease on ships. Or it can also be an insult too. <laughs> and then on the back too. And then in this uh, lesson they've given you some questions. So once they've read that you could ask them some questions to go along with it. Then we have our warm-up sheet again. That would be the morning lesson, then this would be in our bedtime basket. So this would be um, before you read the story, so you'll go through the sheet. Um, so it's got some words taught in previous lessons for review, you've got some new decodable words, names from people in the story that you'll be reading, and then this one has got some phrases on the back as well. So you read that then, and then on uh, there are some information tips here for you for decoding with the uh, larger words if they needed assistance so for example uh, let's have a look if they were having trouble reading squash uh, squash apparently I have trouble too if they were having trouble reading swashbuckling <laughs> uh, then they would you could build it and it explains to you how you drop the e and add ing and again some more information should you need to um, and to actually build uh, these words and add the correct syllable tags then we go on to vocabulary and active, activate prior knowledge. So you would read this information out to them um, before they start their story. Then they would read the story for that day. So the story is Pirate Food. I'll just give you a little flip through. The pictures are just gorgeous. I love uh, all about reading stories. So we would read that story and then you would um, ask them some questions whilst you're reading and then after reading. And then they've got a little read aloud tip for you. And then you would mark your sticker and he's got another little message for you. And then the next lesson we're talking about Spanish influences. So before we, I give you my review, I'll just give you a little flip through of the reader. So you can get an idea. As I said, I just adore the pictures and the stories are fantastic. This is such a fun one about bugs, library bugs. And it's a mixture of different things, um, different stories in here. This was a really fun one, the pig, um, making his, his different meals and he was trying to get his recipe published. It was hilarious. <laughs> so he got various rejections from different publications before he got his, um, his recipe published for pigs. So yeah, they're just lovely. I absolutely adore the stories. Um, with level four, you've got two readers. So this is the second reader. There are two hardback books that come with level four. So this is the review box. Um, the phonogram cards are at the front and then these are all your word cards and then these are the ones that we have left um, to do before we finish the year. So as I, I don't think I said, we're in second grade currently, um, but you'll probably see this video when we are actually in third grade because that's when I'm planning on posting it. But yes, um, these are all the word cards. You can put them behind here, so once you've um, taught them, but I've always just kept them in there, it's just for simplicity, and then what I'll do is I'll just take them out, shuffle them, and then take out my 10 um, for the two days when we do the review, and then all the newer ones are towards the back. Obviously, all these were back there originally, so <laughs> you can see how many we've already done, and then this is what we've got left. I need to take out the ones from the lesson for this week. 
Okay, I'll just give you a quick look as well as the contents page. So there are 62 lessons in level, sorry, 63 lessons in level three. So we're on 58, so we'll do 58 and 59 this week. And then we've just got two more weeks left before we're finished. I'm really sad to be finished, to be honest, because well, I'll get to that in a review point. I love this curriculum. There we go. And then you've got all your appendix um, information at the back. So you've got your scope and sequence, um, blending procedures, syllable types, syllable division rules. Silent E, um, ways to spell long vowel sounds and how to handle the sh sound. And then we've got different uh, instructions as well there. Okay, so my opinion on it overall, I absolutely adore level four just as much as I do the other levels. By the end of finishing level three, my daughter was fluent with her reading um, for the age that she was at and she was also ahead as well um, from from her grade, so she's, she's reading above her grade level. Um, now some people do stop at three and don't do four, um, but I went, I actually didn't do the placement test because I'm 99% sure she probably would have passed it. Um, I just decided to continue with it because I adore the curriculum. She absolutely has loved it and it's been such a precious journey um, from when we started to now, how she's grown with reading um, from I'd already taught her letters and letter sounds before we started level one and we were beginning to blend. Um, so level one, um, we flew through quite quickly, um, which is why we finished level four in second, well, we will be finishing level four in second grade. Um, but go at your own pace, go at your kid's pace. I love the fact that they say to you, you should only spend 20 minutes on a lesson, no more than that. Uh, anything else after that, do it the next day. So that it's a, it's a gentle but thorough approach. Um, it is great for children who have any kind of any any kind of struggle with reading because it was actually written by the author's children ha or child had dyslexia, so it is written with children in mind and offers a multi and offers a multi sensory approach to the whole curriculum. Um, for level four, as I said, I, we probably would have passed the placement test had I have done it and not needed to do it, but I'm really glad I did because I think it just consolidated um, everything that we'd already learnt um, and extended on it. For example, as you just saw then, the French roots in language. The week before that, it was Greek roots in language. So we learnt all about how Greek influences impact language and how the different sounds that the different phonograms make can actually change how the word is read um, and it's just an absolutely fantastic curriculum so I don't regret doing level four um, it's been fantastic I would definitely uh, continue past level three if I had the option to do it again to do level four I like it that much as I said I absolutely adore the stories um, in as you can see uh, this is who it was written by the author Marie Ripple and I love her philosophy of the, the fact that she's teaching uh, abstract ideas in a concrete way. It's a research-based curriculum, multisensory program, because as you can see, we are incorporating lots of different multisensory activities into our lessons. And here it explains what's included. So we are talking about reading comprehension, fluency, vocabulary, phonics and decoding, phonological awareness. Um, it is a mastery approach. And it is just, as far as I'm concerned, the ultimate programme to teach your children to read. I never did the pre-reading programme, although our box is yellow. I never actually did the pre-reading programme, that was just what came with it. We started in level one, um, when my daughter was four, um, approaching five. And as I said, it has just been a blessing. She is a very strong reader, but not only that, she absolutely loves books and reading. And I definitely think that this curriculum has encouraged her love of reading because it hasn't killed the love of reading the joy of reading by drown drowning them in a program that wasn't multi-sensory that that didn't provide interactive elements to it that didn't provide amazing stories this does all of those things and more so as for level four it's just as fantastic as all the other levels i have done a review on level two uh, i didn't do a level review on level three um for no other reason other than i never got a chance and i've actually filed it away in our, in our filing box um but it was just as good uh all of the levels have been fantastic and i would highly highly recommend it i hope that was useful for you if you've got any questions Definitely leave them below. I'm going to put these into our workbox and cry when we finish <laughs> the program because I have just adored this and our days once uh, we've it's, we've always done reading the reading curriculum 
the first thing we've done in school. Uh, so it's going to leave a, a considerable gap in terms of it not being there anymore. I've definitely got other things that we'll be doing instead to put in its place. But I will always treasure and um, the memories I have from teaching my daughter to read um, with All About Reading. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and I will see you in our next video. Bye for now.